honestly, I don't really feel like doing an intro. I have one, I have one question. Like why, why is Dan Quinn still coaching for the Atlanta? <laughs> how is, how has Bill O'Brien fired before Dan Quinn? I mean, they're, I himself. guess, dude, that's what I'm trying to figure out because <laughs> I was live streaming earlier today and I was like, is it even technically possible for Bill O'Brien to get fired? Like, can he legally not be in the Houston Texans organization anymore? And then like an hour later, like Bill O'Brien gets fired. I'm like, damn, he must have fired himself. He, he, had, he held a meeting with himself where he first promoted himself to offensive coordinator. That's my dream then, job. And then relinquished his powers as GM and head coach. I'm trying to get fired from Big Dog so bad. <laughs> I'm trying to get big. I'm trying to become a big enough corporation where I could hire a CEO that could fire me. That'd be fucking lit. So if anyone out there has CEO qual- qualifications, you know, it's fantastic. Like anytime I talk about something like that in terms of B- BDGE, I'll have like 92 college kids be like, yo, I could do that job for you. I'm, I, I really need emails. I need people reaching out to me. Tell me if you're qualified for um, big dog CEO. All right. And I want a resume full of, things that you've done qualifications you're not allowed to be over the age of 21 you have to be younger than 21 in this description real well i'm a lawyer but, i'm an accountant but you need but you need 25 years of experience <laughs> so start it off all right this is bunk bed breakdowns podcast hosted by michael and noah at fb god at FB <laughs> <laughs> no if you could change your name what would it actually be have you ever thought I, I, I don't that? even know. Like, I think about changing it, but at the same time, I kind of like the asshole persona that comes with the name FB God. So I don't know. The How FB do you bun. not have? Do you have? What's your background right now? Is it Justin Herbert yet or no? No, it's still LT. Uh, honest question. I let me see. I think it's just uh, LT. It's LT, it's LT yeah. and Keenan. You have Eckler in there. You fucking sandbag and son of a bitch. <laughs> He's in the, <laughs> in the <laughs> bike. <laughs> All right, uh, so one of you two needs to take the reins, or else I'm going to be going down this this like deep hole for the rest of the episode. All right, I mean, let's look, hit the I, intro. I, I... <laughs> Sorry, it, like, it was a brutal I, I week. I can't host these anymore. I can't do this. Go. It was uh, it was a brutal week. I mean, we already lost. Barkley for the season. We've lost CMC for half the season, even though it clearly, clearly CMC doesn't matter because Mike Davis is the god, Go. the fucking god. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I'm gonna be starting both of them. <laughs> Winston, <laughs> dude, I, I remember, I remember last year uh, when David Montgomery drew, and I was not a fan at all of David Montgomery, and I was like, this is fucking Mike Davis season, and turns out. It was not Mike Davis season. Mike it Davis is, is going to be season. Mike Davis going to be Michael. the starting running back for Atlanta Falcons 2021 <laughs> when we start our rebuild. Still <laughs> under, <laughs> still under. Uh, no, I, honestly, Adam Gates probably going to be our head coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lose it. I'm not a Falcons fan. No, no. <laughs> whatever. Mike Davis goat. C Mac dead. Yeah. C Mac dead. Barkley Nick, dead. Nick Echo Chubb dead. Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb dead. dead. Uh, <laughs> Nick Chubb dead. But De- Ernest Johnson. Is well alive, very much alive. <laughs> coldest to ever do it. To earn coldest to ever do it. <laughs> the AAF rushing champ. All right, all right, all right, all right. You, have you guys looked at his profile? Do you know what he runs? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> no, it's not no. great. Four, four, eight, runs five, a four, eight, eight six. <laughs> Elijah Holyfield's like, God damn, you're slow. All right, all right. In all seriousness, Nick Chubb put on the IR. Uh, Kareem Hunt. Anyone who – oh, we got a bomb. We've got it. Okay. It is a flag. I it's just assume flag. it's going to be a holding – like a deep defensive pass interference or a touchdown. It's the yeah. only, these are the only two options when a bomb yeah, goes it, up against Falcons. Uh, and your player's injured. <laughs> our backup's probably better than our starter anyway, so it doesn't fucking matter. Okay. Chubb gone. Going to be on the IR. Meniscus. Six weeks. Six weeks. Oh, really? It's up to six. It's up to six weeks, right? Uh yeah, but the the current current projection is like six weeks. Basically. Yeah, all the all the all the guys that went down this week, like C Mac already said he's not going to be here this week. Chubb's definitely going to be on the the longer side, four to six weeks. Uh, Eckler, I'd be surprised if he was back there before a month. I would say like five to six weeks is is probably like the lightest side of it. Yeah, grade two hamstring strain. So that shit, even when he comes back, I'm not feeling great. 
I think it's going to be like very similar to C Mac, where he's made, yeah, month is is easily the lightest that we'll see on him. So we're in a, we're in a pretty bad predicament right here. So Dearness Johnson is definitely not a guy I'm looking to run out and like grab on waiver wires for um, for redraft, but he's going to be out there in all these dynasty leagues probably because I don't think anyone's yep. rostering him. The question becomes like with Kareem Hunt, do they start using Kareem Hunt more like what Nick Chubb has been doing, where he's like the early down grinder because Kareem Hunt's been so fucking good just being the playmaker, right? The guy who's lining up in the slot a little bit, catching a lot of passes, also running the ball too. Uh, but does he take over the early down work for Nick Chubb? Does this offense start to go a little bit more pass heavy? Um, is Odell officially bike? Like, what are we doing here with Dearness Johnson? Does he become the pass catching back while Kareem Hunt starts being the grinder? Uh, I doubt it. I mean, I think, like, this is one of those rare circumstances where, like, the backup might be worth more than the starter now that Nick Chubb has kind of gone down, like Kareem Hunt was already scoring like a beast anyways. He's getting goal line work. He's getting receiving work. He didn't get any targets this game, or at least didn't get any catches this game. But I would expect him to continue getting getting some more catches going down. Like, I mean, they're still a super, super run-heavy uh, offense. Like, they're, I think they're like game-neutral run, run percentage is like close to like 60%. So it's going to be up there going forward. I think just all it does is it gives Kareem Hunt more carries on the on the front end. And, you know, he can handle the workload. So I'd expect him to be a full like three down back with some Dernest, the sickest Johnson getting mixed in there once in a while. Yeah, the thing is, you could tell me Darnus Johnson had like a 45% college target share, and I'd believe you because I don't know a damn about this kid. The <laughs> thing is, like, I do expect Kareem Hunt to take over the three-down workhorse type of role. If that makes him more pass-heavy, I'm not so sure. I know their schedule upcoming isn't going to be the greatest against the, or for Baker Mayfield to be able to pass the ball. They're playing the Colts this week. I almost feel like Hunt is a guy with his skill set who's kind of matchup proof because he's actually yep. really good on every down. So whereas, like, Mike, you alluded to Nick Chubb, probably being a worse fantasy option than Kareem Hunt, given if they relatively both had the backfield by themselves. Yep. Like, you know, even going against Indy, I think they play Chicago soon, maybe, or I might the be making that up. After that. Okay. So, yeah. Either way, like, I'm not – I wouldn't be afraid to play Hunt whatsoever, right? Not at all. Not at all. He's – I think right now, honestly, for the weeks without Chubb, he – the only guys I'm starting ahead of him for sure are, uh, are Alvin Kamara and Dalvin Cook and possibly Zeke, except they're kind of in there. So, like, I brought this up on the Market Watch Mondays. Like, he's kind of in that what top about Mike three, Davis? top four. Oh, sorry. Mike Davis was already mm-hmm. in his own tier. So, I, that was, I that was a given. Him. Yeah, that was a given. So, okay. to God, like, gods don't get mixed with men. So, he's already a given. But aside from in the mere mortal mortal realm, <laughs> uh, he, he's kind of top three, top four for me. Okay, so we got Kareem Hunt absolutely shooting up. Uh, Dearness Johnson is a guy that I, I would I would throw some fab bucks on it if you were a Nick Chubb owner, but obviously he's not going to be a long term problem because Nick Chubb is going to be back this year. Kareem Hunt's going to run shit down there and in, in the Cleveland backfield and like you know we talked about it. They made these offensive line moves this offseason. Right now they're grading out as like a top three O line in basically every advanced metric website right now. So the plan that they had in place it looked ugly after week one after getting their ass kicked by the Ravens, but they're they're looking fucking pristine right now and that offense is it's clicking. They're doing exactly what they want and they're fucking playing bully ball up front now. Uh, another guy I'm surprised you didn't mention in your uh, you wouldn't start over is is Josh Kelly now that now that Austin Eckler is dead. We don't have to do this. I promise we don't have to talk about Josh Kelly. <laughs> Josh Kelly and Justin Jackson will take over that backfield there because Eckler pops his hamstring off off the bone, and neither of these running backs look good. No, I'm curious. To, I'm really curious to see how they actually split this backfield because. Jackson seems like he's probably going to take over Eckler's role in a sense, right? Be like an Eckler light. I, I think it's going to be like a 50-50 time split, maybe like 55-ish in, in term in favor of Kelly, and he'll probably get a little bit more of the valuable work. Like their matchups coming up are fucking juicy, and that's what hurts so bad with Eckler. He's mm-hmm. going to have a lot of goal line opportunities, I think, coming up. That's yep. assuming Anthony Lynn like doesn't do something outrageous <laughs> and actually put Tyrod Taylor back into the starting lineup. That would be bad news all around, but – um, Justin Jackson's a guy that definitely needs to be on Josh Kelly. You know, I, I don't know. Like what, what are your guys thoughts right now? Like, wh- is there a certain guy you'd rather own, uh, going forward? I'm assuming it's gotta be Josh Kelly here, but I think both of them need to be rostered. Yeah. I mean, if, if I, I spend any sort of fab, I would probably rather go after Justin Jackson because he can be acquired for cheaper. And honestly, I just don't think Josh Kelly is that good. The thing that does concern me about Kelly though, is that game against the chiefs. He had like 27 touches. They wanted to rely on him very heavily, which yeah. obviously shows that the coaching staff likes him. But then last game, he had like nine rushes for seven yards, and he also fumbled, which then the Tampa Bay Buccaneers scored off of. They blew a huge lead. I was real sad about that. And Justin Jackson, throughout his entire time in the NFL, has basically been Austin Eckler light. He's been extremely efficient on the touches he was given. 
Last year, he played like three or four weeks, averaging like seven yards a carry, just regular. That's, that's the tough part, though, because like they've shown so far that they do trust Josh Kelly. But I feel like the fact that they've hung on to Justin Jackson, like through all the injuries, having really bad draft capital tells you that they probably like him a lot, too. And I mean, we can't forget he missed most of the summer with an injury, got injured in week one, didn't play weeks two and three. So this first week coming back where he still, uh, you know, shared the opportunities like 45 percent to just uh, Josh Kelly's like 55 percent coming off of the multi-week injury. Like you got to think that they're they're very ready to get him involved, right? Yeah. yeah, and they played a good run defense, and he did just as bad as Josh Kelly. So I think he's ready to go out there next week. Whoever they play, they play – All relative. <laughs> I think they get New Orleans, which is going to be tough. So that's probably Josh Kelly's job to lose after that game. Then they get the Jets, Miami, Jacksonville, Las Vegas, and Denver all in a row, all of which stink against the run. I think Josh, Justin Jackson uh, is going to make a push for that starting job because Josh Kelly just – he's he's not good at anything other than, like, running in a straight line. And with that offensive line, that's not going to work most of the time. Yeah, I mean, before the season started, I actually – thought like I preferred Justin Jackson over Joshua Kelly obviously that was wrong because Justin Jackson well one he got hurt but two like Joshua Kelly kind of stole the job and but like the more I watched Joshua Kelly the more I'm just like yeah I was like I was right this guy's a jag now he's, he's like the quintessential jag when he runs but but he has the opportunity right so if I had to choose between the two and they were the same cost I would probably take Joshua Kelly because they're going to give him the opportunity and if Anthony Lynn has shown anything with his retarded ass comments about about how how they lost the game and Justin Herbert lost the game, it, it's, it goes to show that he's kind of gonna do some stupid shit. So, Dude, what is his deal? Like, I like Anthony <laughs> Lynn as a head coach, but like, why does he do shit like that? Anthony Lynn know. is like us five months ago when Justin Herbert first got drafted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he fucking faded him in his rookie drafts, and now he can't get over it. A Rod to Robert Tanyan touchdown catch. Are you Tanyan? serious? Tanyan's becoming a thing, huh? Yeah. Damn like, it! I'm going up against Robert Tanyan in the league. That's bad. Ouch. Bad times. That, that's. that's a shitty dagger right there like like oh this guy's fucking starting robert tanyan like no way he puts up more than four points i'm pretty sure he has like 13 already yeah he has 13 gg let's talk about robert tanyan what do you know about robert tanyan i don't know he's athletic he's athletic and he's better than jay sternberger that's all i know about him jay sternberger name went to die real quick huh i I was told he was gonna be the uh the wide receiver too in this offense this year fucking stinks they drafted Josiah Deguara, too, to block and do nothing else. So, Robert Tanya. <laughs> oh, yeah. Robert Tanya's got uh, uh, some fucking yeah. mountains on his player profile. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, been, he's always been pretty athletic. I actually have a, a shocking amount of Robert Tanya that I picked up. Uh, I have literally zero. Year. I just feel like he was one of those guys where in the summer, like, people just name at all five tight ends on the Packers and, like, I like this guy. I like this guy. I like this guy. And I'm just like, I don't know who Robert Tanyan is. Yeah. I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> it's like ashes go to ashes. Like, Jake Kumarow died for Robert yeah. Tanyan to, like, explode. <laughs> exactly. Like, that. that's how it is. And there's always, like, ten of those same guys on the Packers roster, and I never know what the fuck is going on. Okay. Like, I think you brought up Jags running backs when you were talking about Joshua Kelly. How about James Robinson, our boy, just continuing to prove us right? Another 100-yard game. Their offensive line actually doesn't look terrible, and despite getting blown out by the Cincinnati fucking Bengals, he had 21 touches on the game. Honestly, I don't think it's crazy to say he's a top-10 running back going forward. And for Dynasty, I think I moved him inside my top 24 just because the coach loves him, and this offense, although it's not clicking, he's doing everything that they need him to do to be able to produce. And He's basically Leonard Fournette if Leonard Fournette could score touchdowns from last season. Oh, he's he's well inside my top twenty-four. I kind of moved him up there. He's like I think I have him at like the maybe the sixth or fifth round or something like that. I definitely have him ahead of David Montgomery. I have him ahead of a lot of those like low end RB twos. I would say like, man, he's 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 by far to me, to me, a, a someone who does not understand film at all, just watching him, he is by far the best performing running back so far ahead of CH, ahead of ahead of fucking Trent Richardson ahead of cam Akers, um hey, yeah he's, just, he's look good too yeah and tony gibson's look good but but and tony gibson hasn't looked that great on the ground like like j rob has looked good on the ground and through the air the coaches keep saying they're gonna rely on him they keep relying on him and you know i, I tweeted this out earlier but i was like dude like this guy had 21 touches in a blowout had 17 touches in a blowout he's been producing with every opportunity he's given the coaches are all in on him like if you're not in on him now, like, what the fuck are you waiting for? And, like, I get some responses. Some guys are, like, a contract. It's like, dude, first of all, <laughs> Just he got, has, a, like, drafted or didn't first get drafted. First of all, he's you know what a it is? It's, it's, like, the same same dudes who start fading James Robinson are the same dudes who, like, hold on hope with T.Y. Hilton for, like, three weeks too long. <laughs> and A.J. Green, like, all the people that just you, – you can't move slow in fantasy, man. Like, yeah. if you see it there, it's there. It's, like, Mike did a great uh, Market Watch Monday uh, last week, I think it was, talking about, like, James Robinson, talking about how, like, 
you can say all the preface factors you want about how this guy's not going to succeed, but as soon as he does something else, then you need to put him into a pool with players who are amongst that same statistical like category. And then you need to go, okay, how many of these guys succeed? You know, once you come in and do this in an NFL game, like, that's where it starts to become a thing. And, like, we know this much about James Robinson. We're like, oh, Devino. Like, is Devino Zigbo? Like, <laughs> I feel like he's on a 10-week IR. Are we sure he's coming back? Like, we just I don't have think the- so. Same with Raquel Armstead. He hasn't seen the field in so both, long. Both of them have been out since, like, July. <laughs> like, are we – like, what, what are they doing over there? I don't understand. So, this is nonsense. James Robinson's a fucking king right now. Joe Mixon's coming off his fucking I, – I went Ooh. on a fucking parade tour around uh, <laughs> absolutely shitting all over Mixon. But this is exactly what I said. I was like, listen, he's going to pop off for a huge game, and then everyone's going to go nuts about it. The reality of the situation is uh, he looked great on Sunday, obviously, got a lot of the passing work, but he's one for four in good games. So right now we're going to learn a lot about who Mixon is over the next two weeks because he gets Indy and he gets Baltimore, right? So when they're not in game scripts where they're dominating the game and they don't need that, that, that's where I think maybe we'll learn a little bit more because – this was not a game which they needed two and four minute drills, right? They didn't need to hurry up in those times. And that's usually where Geo comes in and gets the pass catching work in games where they're just like very much, you know, normal, neutral tie game and shit like that. Like Mixon doesn't need to come off the field because they're not running at a very fast pace. So I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to see how the next couple uh, weeks play out for Mixon. Yeah. I think uh, the interesting thing about Mixon is like, I kind of said this on, on the market watch Mondays, but like if he had gone out and had like, 30 totes on the ground like even if he had like 180 yards and four touchdowns i'd be out there selling him right now immediately right but the fact that he did get involved in the passing game the fact that he did get six targets six catches the way he got the points uh was was a little bit more impressive for me but i think you brought up a good point is like once you get into the two minute drills is he still out there so that's gonna be something i'm monitoring so i don't think he's a he's a buy or anything like that but he's I'm, a whole, also, he's I'm like, also not selling. Yeah, you don't sell him just to sell him right now. You know, you, yeah. you kind of see what you have here, and then and then you kind of – also, in, in this landscape, like, who has the luxury of selling <laughs> someone who's getting 25 touches? Like, every yeah. running back is just, like, dead. At <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you Would you guys know. rather have rest of the season, uh, Joe Mixon or James Robinson? James Robinson. I, I think I would take Robinson, too. I was thinking about this while I was talking about it in the video today. It's just – um, I, I like, I, I, I really like, I mean, we all really like James Robinson at this point. It just, his role is so solidified and it seems like no matter what their game script is, it's James Robinson. And well, I, I think we're still yet to see that with Joe Mixon. Well, it was a good step in the right direction, but like, do you really have trust that he's going to continue to be like the sole pass catching back there? Like no one's going to be surprised if Geo catches five passes next week, right? Like might not happen, but when it does happen, I don't know if there's any, any room for surprise there. Yeah, like I will two say, weeks ago, I think he had four catches. Last week, he had nothing. This week, he had five on six targets. Like, you never really know what you're going to get out of him. And the fact that they're going up against two tough opponents and their team, although they blew out the Jaguars, they're, they're not good. They're not going to be in many situations where they're playing from ahead. Although he's going to get, like, 20 to 25 touches a game, I'm not sure they're going to be nearly as valuable as they were this past Sunday. The other, the other thing, too, is, like, even, with, like you said, like, Joe Mixon has had games already this year where he's caught, like, four or five balls but they're always like behind the line of scrimmage, like nothing there, right? Like there are teams who, who use their running backs like as actual weapons and receivers, not just like dump offs. Like they run wheel routes, they run from the slot, they run out wide. And like, those are the kind of targets and receptions I want to see for a running back to make me feel good about it. Like, you know, like fucking Rojo catches six balls, for like seven <laughs> yards this weekend. Like that's great that you get six receptions, nine targets. But when you turn that into like two yards per reception, I mean, is are you really like the pass catching back? You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't trust him yet, but I am intrigued enough to kind of hold and not not rush to the rush to the sell high. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting. I mean, Joe Burrow, real deal, right? Real Bro, deal. This I was guy looks some, good. I was pulling some baseball or some football cards. You got a you got a Burrow card? Signed Herbert. Starting to get into the card game. Yeah, everyone's fucking getting me into it. And I got people DMing me telling me I could literally make a million dollars off my YouTube following <laughs> via cars and shit. I pulled a couple uh yeah, borough rookies. Apparently this is worth like three to five hundred dollars if I grade it out. And I'm just like, I don't I don't really know any of this shit, but everyone's like graded your- out. What do you mean graded you, you, out? You send it up to these companies like PSA and um they grade them. So they they tell you the condition of the card from like one uh... to ten. Up. It's in like ten, it's like gem mint. And the higher the grade, obviously, the, the better condition. I pulled it. You know who this fucking guy is? I don't know who this is. It was a signature. Kamal Martin. 
No, it's it's a college card linebacker from Minnesota. Come on, Martin. Not that any you fuckers know linebackers in college. <laughs> Pulling a bunch of rookie QBs. I'm pumped up about it. Sorry, go on about Joe Burrow. Yeah, yeah, Joe Burrow. Parking, baby. I'm Joe Burrow looks like the real deal. Where, where'd you order those from? Amazon? Yeah, I got a box from Amazon. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna keep ordering them. I think they're so fun to just like pull out on, on camera. Everyone keep Dude, getting, like get your greasy fingers off the fucking cards. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was thinking about ordering some too, not not to do on YouTube, but just to have because I like collecting cards. You should do it on like in the beginning of one of the one of your videos. People, it, dude, it's really fun to watch. They call them uh, box breaking. You like you break, you open up boxes and you like pull the cards one by one, and people go nuts over them. Oh, shit! All right, I'll, I'll, I'll do that on the next uh, Market Watch Monday. Like, we're to, changing what? the channel direction. We're just a <laughs> box opening dude, channel. Like I might do that. People keep what? telling me we can make so much money doing it. I was like, what All right. brand? Uh, what brand you get? See, I don't know too much about it. I know like Panini is like the time. Someone in the comment section will probably give us like the. Oh, we have it uh, actually. Mike, in, in Discord, we opened up a sports card channel. So oh, all right, cool. Get there, you can you can figure that out. All right, all right cool. Um, yeah, I, was, I mean, I was Joe Burrow looks like the fucking real deal. I mean, so he good. is he is gonna be. I mean, he's already like my my dynasty like top end dynasty QB after like that elite tier. Uh, he might jump into that elite tier after after this season, but he's been he's been incredible. Um, I mean, that offense that offense looks good, man. That offense is good. He got Tyler Boyd. He's got that gel in with him. T Higgins stepped up again. AJ Green ghosted again. Uh, and then we obviously got Joe Mixon on the ground. Their O line still stinks, but you know, Jonah Williams kind of stepping up, playing a little bit. I, I'm I'm hopeful for this offense as long as like Zach, Zach Taylor starts putting together some fucking like proper play calling and stop calling like dust plays. Uh, they got they got a long way to go. I mean, Joe Burrow's gonna lead that team, man. The only yeah, thing dude. keeping me from not hating T. Higgins is me thinking that every time he catches the ball, it's Chad Ochocinco reborn. <laughs> I've been seeing 85 for Cincinnati. just makes me feel good. And he's looked really good these past two weeks. He's basically Wally pipped A.J. Green because A.J. Green is seeing like eight targets a game and turning that into 20 yards. Higgins got a rush yesterday. He had like a 13-yard rush. He's been using the red zone. He's being used deep down the field. And him and Burrow seem to have a really good connection in their first year together. A.J. Dude, Green Burrow, look, looking like the Joshua Kelly of wide receivers right now. Yeah, <laughs> or, or the Rojo. There's a lot of running backs who just catch the ball and fucking immediately die on contact. <laughs> embarrassing. Um, Burrow, yeah, I mean, Burrow's looks so fucking good, man. Like, and I feel like we we almost got spoiled with how good Burrow was last year at LSU. That like, if he did anything below what he's doing right now, everyone would be like, "What the fuck?" You know, like everyone's everyone's kind of expected a year like this, and he has like far surpassed you know what we should have expected for him. But he's looked um, he's looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah. Speaking of good quarterbacks, I mean, Justin Herbert, the god, went toe to toe with the goat. Uh, he put up some ridiculous numbers. What do you do I, when you have a god versus a goat? <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Uh, but yeah, he's been incredible, he's been man. He's putting up three, That's about it. What do you do? Like 300, 300 yards. Uh, oh, sorry, 290 yards. So close. But like basically 300 yards in all three of the starts. Put up three touchdowns, threw a pick. Uh, I actually bet on the Chargers plus 7.5, so won that spread. That was money. But he's been good, man. I mean, and, and then I was looking today. I'm probably going to be picking him up on a lot of my waivers as a streamer because his schedule coming up is juicy as fuck for passing, for passing right? Like, he's got uh, coming up against the Saints, against a very depleted secondary, which Matt Stafford lit up. And then he got the Jets, which you can – I mean, you can fucking march Brett Ripon out there. You can probably march just Justin Herbert out there. He's got the Miami Dolphins. He's got the Jaguars who fucking stink. On We're being fucking stunk, bro. He got me yeah. like 11 points. In <laughs> I, wouldn't, then, I wouldn't push you that far. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, I mean, it, it depends what type of league scoring you're playing in. But if you're playing like a standard like 6-1 league, Ripian got you enough points to get by. Uh, but yeah, he's got the Dolphins. He's got the Jaguars. He's got the Raiders. And he's got the Broncos. So, like, you can ride Herbert the God for the next few weeks. Um, I mean, I move, I'm moving up in my dynasty rankings as well. Like, he he looks hella good. I'm I'm... I prefer him over Daniel Jones today. Oh yeah, I moved Herbert up to. He's my fifth. He's 15 right now for me, and I probably could move him higher. I have him above Wentz, Daniel Jones, Aaron Rodgers, Stafford, and, and the rest of those guys. But he's right. He's one behind like Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff, that uh, tier of guys. He's looked good enough that like at this point in the rookie season, this is how young he is. Like the ceiling, the ceiling is there to get to like a very high tier in fantasy. That I think. You know, you have to average that out between what he could end up being and, you know, the, the ceiling that he has presented thus far. I also think his rushing upside might come into play a little bit more with Austin Eckler out. They don't have a trusted receiver out of the backfield. I know Joshua Kelly kind of has hands and so does Justin Jackson. But if they don't want to trust them out of the backfield, we know Herbert is surprisingly quick. I think he ran like a 4.6 or 4.7. He's a big dude. 
big, strong runner like a Blake Bortles type, I think that he's going to be unlocked a little bit because I don't even think he's top 20 yards rushing in any of his games thus far. He did find the end zone early on, but if he can add that to his repertoire at this point, the way he's throwing the ball too deep down the field to our board, Jalen Guyton, who fucking dude, buries Mike in the him. fillet league. I can't believe he fucking started him against <laughs> me, dude. What the fuck? I, I got a text from Giannis I... one second after he scored. He wrote, Guyton, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I have Guyton. I kept Guyton in the one league, Mike, that you and me are playing against each other. I didn't start him, obviously, because you kicked yeah, my yeah. ass. But yeah, but I fucking stopped you in that league anyways. Send trades. Send, send trades. <laughs> Beetle send trades. Send trades for Guyton. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Justin Herbert's look good. Keenan Allen with Eckler out. I expect him to get more targets. Uh, sneakily, though, freaking Goose, Goose, Henry Goose has been pretty fucking good. Uh, he didn't do that great this game, but he's been pretty stable and he hasn't scored any TDs, but he's looked good. Justin Herbert's relied on him a lot. So in your tight end premium leagues, he was going in like the double digit round. So huge value. And if TD reversion comes like comes his way, he could be looking up for some big weeks. Um, yeah, that kind of wraps up the Chargers. But I mean, on the Buck side, we already mentioned it. Rojo has the lead job on the ground, uh, put up 100 rushing, look like fucking Jordan Howard in the passing game. So don't expect them to retain that role for, for too long. But Tom Let's Brady, talk about this backfield, though. Let's talk about the backfield because Keyshawn Vaughn comes in at the end, yeah. catches the 10-yard touchdown after Rojo just, like, continuously drops passes. <laughs> and it seems like – I mean, LaShawn McCoy got hurt, so that yep. put Vaughn on the field. And Vaughn was obviously someone who got super hyped up in the offseason. I'm assuming – actually, they play Thursday night, so there's a real possibility. I saw – I think Dr. Morris put out, like, he doesn't expect Evans, Godwin – uh, or shady to play on Thursday night, so they're going to be a super depleted offense. Um, and this could, this could, you know, this could open up some holes for Vaughn or Fournette. Uh, I don't, I still don't know, like, if there's ever going to be a point in the season where you're comfortable starting any of them outside of like a Fournette sitting, like Rojo's a, a, a decent start. I think if there's any ever a time like to sell one of them and you can sell them, I think that you should because there's never going to be a chance where you get like feel comfortable starting any one of these guys. They do have a really, really easy schedule coming up after Chicago. They get Green Bay, Las Vegas, uh, the Giants, the Saints who are kind of tough, Carolina. So you might want to hold on to hope like hold on to hope that Ronald Jones is going to be good. But we've seen this happen before. Ronald Jones has a good game. Then they play him 30 percent of the snaps. Leonard Fournette scores two touchdowns somehow. Now Keyshawn Vaughn is in the mix where they spent pretty good draft capital on. He caught that touchdown. I don't know. I just feel like the mistakes that Ronald Jones makes, whether it be like blocking mistakes or dropping passes, is enough for both Tom Brady and Bruce Arians to tell him to sit down and any given week he can just put up a dud for you. Yeah, we got to trade him. We got to unload him in BBB with no league. <laughs> we got a first for Stafford and him. That's all right. Yeah, so that was good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. But Tom Brady, man, looks fucking good. I mean, I don't know how many lessons need to be taught about doubting the GOAT, but people just keep doing it and talking about his noodle arm. He dropped a dime in a bucket to O.J. Howard, who unfortunately hit the fucking IR. So good. rest in peace to that guy. But Tom Brady looked good, so that, that, that bodes well for the pass catchers. Hopefully Mike Evans is healthy because I have an abnormal amount of Mike Evans across the leagues, so I need him as a wide receiver one. But overall, that offense looks pretty good. looks pretty jolly. So going to be some fantasy points coming out of there. On the flip side, the Eagles fucking stink. Um, I mean, Carson Wentz just looks bad. He's based, I, I tweeted out, I said he's 2018 Josh Allen because that's basically what you're getting now is you're getting some Russian production on the ground, but this guy is not passing it. I mean, granted, he has no weapons. Lane Johnson's out. Jason Peters out. Uh, I mean, his wide receiver one's Greg Ward. Uh, Zach Ertz fucking stinks. Honestly, uh, Zach Ertz had a Kalen Balazs <laughs> rushing line for a receiver. Dude, I was about to say, Ertz actually might respectively look as worse than Wentz does. At his own <laughs> position, like, Ertz looks just as bad as Wentz. Wentz is throwing fucking ducks up there. Like, he threw <laughs> to one to John Hightower on the sideline that was like <laughs> – it was like a knuckleball. I'm like, Wentz, are you a fucking professional quarterback? What are, what are we doing over here? And you could see they're starting to get Jalen Hurts a little bit more involved. You know, all rushing, obviously, but yeah. that's how it starts. He's a gateway drug right now. The Hurts rushing is a gateway drug to get him on the field. I still don't really think it happens, to be honest with you, just because it's like there's, there's nothing for Wentz to really work with, but he has looked awful. And at this point, it's just like we can't keep making excuses for it. And it, it hurts a lot as someone who uh, – Really, really like Miles Sanders. Yeah. What are we doing, Miles Sanders, man? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting to Miles Sanders. I'm, I'm considering like benching him in, in some of these matchups because that team fucking stinks. And Wentz can't throw a dump off pass to save his life. That's the shitty part, man. Is like he put up fine numbers. Like even watching the game, Sanders was easily the bright spot on that offense. Like he looked a lot better than his box box score ended up presenting. And he could add another 20, 30 receiving yards if, if Wentz can just fucking hit him on a throw. But yeah, it's it's becoming. 
becoming a little bit worrisome. I just, again, in, in this landscape, like, you know, I doubt you have good enough options to bench a guy like, like Miles Sanders. So I'll probably keep riding him. Um, I think the goods will, I don't know. I can't even sit here and say that they're eventually going to come, but I'm just, I'm just going to shut my mouth and start Miles Sanders and hope for the best. Yeah. At least their schedule lightens up these next two weeks to play Pittsburgh and Baltimore. So we should expect a pretty big game out of him. I think if you can buy him in dynasty though, now is the time for as long as I can remember the Eagles have had a good offensive line. I feel like they like to build from the inside out and this is kind of an anomaly year. I know last year they were top five or maybe in like the best run blocking line in the NFL. Miles Sanders during the second half of the year looked really good out there. I think if you can buy him cheap now just because of how bad the surrounding pieces look, that'll hopefully replenish next season when people get healthy. It's it's maybe the cheapest you can get Miles Sanders because towards the end of the offseason, he was going late first round, early second round of dynasty startups. Yeah, yeah the, the only issue is like this Eagles offensive line might be might be dust for a while because – they're, you know, they put the pieces together to have these old guys come back and all of them maybe either got hurt or underperformed. And like, yep, they, their first round pick from two years ago, uh, Dillard, right? Like he has wildly underperformed and gotten hurt as well. Like it, it could be a, a long rebuild process for the O-line, which could put them back a few years. So I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous overall about, about the, the prospects of the offense being good, but they are the you know, number one team in the NFC, so I'm not going to doubt the champions. Yeah. Speaking speaking of the NFC, man, fucking Cowboys defense put up one of the most most embarrassing performances I have ever, ever seen. But on the flip side of that, we got Dak Prescott thrown for 500 yards. Garbage time king Dak Prescott. What that means is all of the receivers – are benefiting from it and you know as much as people not loved all to, not all of them <laughs> sorry 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 uh cd lamb and amari cooper are and are cedric benefiting. wilson and donald <laughs> and, Schultz, and Ezekiel. yeah, yeah. basically <laughs> everyone except michael gallup <laughs> yeah. is benefiting from this but you know people love to hate on amari cooper he has been an absolute fucking stud okay 14 targets nine targets 12 targets 16 targets this guy has freaking 51 targets through four weeks. Uh, boom bust narrative. You know, first of all, I don't care about boom bust anyways, but what he's showing in the ceiling? Like, is Amari Cooper a top 10, top eight dynasty wide receiver with Dak at the helm and this Cowboys defense stinking like they do? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at my rankings right now and I have them at 11. I know I moved, I moved them up when we redid them and I think I could probably move them up a little more. Um, right above them, I have from six through 11. It's, I have DK at six, CD at seven, Ridley at eight, AJ Brown nine, DJ Moore 10, Amari's 11. And I think I'm probably ready to put Cooper above DJ Moore right now. Yeah, yeah, I feel like this year he's he's like the Dalvin Cook of this year because Dalvin Cook this year has been awesome and nobody's really talking about him because Minnesota sucks. But Mari Cooper hasn't really found the end zone much. I think he only has one touchdown in the year. But he's quietly on pace for over 200 targets, as Mike was saying. He's being targeted a shit ton, 148 receptions. I know that's probably not likely to keep up, but the way that this Dallas defense is looking and for how often and how much they want to throw the ball, I don't think it's un unreasonable that they have two – 1200 1300 rece yard receivers in amari cooper and cd lamb this year and mike i know you're a big proponent of not selling cd lamb for anything in dynasty and just seeing what this kid could do i'm starting to go into your narrative because i don't know this defense can't stop anybody and he just seems to have overtaken michael gallup in like the first week and now he's just a, a huge part of this offense he's seeing multiple targets a game he's on pace for 84 rece 84 receptions uh 1200 yards and eight touchdowns he looks like what A.J. Brown looked like last year, except on a high-volume offense. So he's somebody that I'm definitely not trying to sell unless you can get, like, a Tyreek Hill for him. Dude, this yeah. team is averaging almost 80 plays a game. It's insane. Like, their, their pace – I was looking at the pace. They are the fastest-paced team in the NFL. The next closest team is four seconds per play behind them. Like, it's not even, it's, it's not even close here, and it's just going to keep translating to these insane fantasy points. And Cooper right now is the wide receiver, two in PPR leagues in fantasy. So – uh, despite not scoring any touchdowns, like his worst game is his week two game against Atlanta, which was six for a hundred. Like when that's your worst game, you're, you know, you're balling the fuck out. So Cooper is having a monster year. I mean, everyone on that Cowboys offense is even it's, it's going over to Zeke now too. He's on pace for over like 90 catches this year. And if you told me like, if you told me in the preseason that Zeke was on, um, was going to catch 80 to 90 passes, I would probably have said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cool taking him over, maybe even C-Mac, like maybe at the, at the 101, obviously looking back, like Kamara, 
one of the other guys injured and shit, but like process wise, Zeke is Zeke is balling. He's just not getting as much work on the ground and not scoring as much, but like this is more than making up for it. Onion just scored another touchdown. This is See? the new George Kittle, yeah. Hell yeah. There was a there was a dude in the goat chat of Patreon. Shout out to uh let me grab his name real quick. He asked me, he was like Mo Alley Cox or, or Robert Tanyan. And I was like, I, I play Robert Tanyan. And Mo Alley Cox, like the one o'clock games go on, and within five seconds, Mo Alley Cox scores a touchdown. I was like, my bad, dude. And now Robert <laughs> Tanyan's fucking balling. So yeah, feels pretty good. Um, so we have what else do we have to talk about? I mean, George Kittle's back. Uh, yeah, I, I went Gittles up against him in a in a super tight end premium where you get like tight ends get points per target, tight ends get extra bonus for your yards. He put up fucking seventy points on me. What seventy? <laughs> Yeah, 70 Fuck points. That. He single-handedly basically he won me the what it do league that we had in because he dropped a 50 for me. And then Scott Fishbowl, he dropped another 50 for me. Uh so Kittle was just sometimes you forget how good like after okay. drafting Kittle, after drafting Kittle, I was like, damn, like I'm so regretting drafting a tight end in the second round. And then he comes oh. out with a week like this, and you watch him, and it's just like takes seven guys to tackle him. <laughs> it's like an, it's an auto seven tackle breaker. I'm like, holy shit, like this is why I drafted this dude. Holy He's so shit. good, man. Mike, He's I know so you're a huge good. fan of uh, Mark Andrews. Is the gap between him and George Kittle just widening as the year goes on? You start to see how low of a pass volume offense Baltimore is and just how inconsistent he's been this year? Yeah, but I mean, I've always had Kittle in his own tier. Like, no one no one has been in Kittle's tier for a long time. If Kelsey was the same age, he'd be in the same tier. But dynasty-wise, like, Kittle's always been in the same tier. I will say, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, Andrews, Andrews definitely still remains to be TD-dependent. Uh, but contrary to the regression drones beliefs, he's still able to score touchdowns somehow. I don't know. I don't know how it's happening. Him and Aaron Jones. I don't know what's up with those guys. They must be like good at football or something. Yeah. It's like they, <laughs> they might be good at football. Their teams might be good. They might be part of good offenses. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It's magic, but it's happening. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely a lower volume guy. But yeah, the, it's Kittle, man. Kittle is, is a god. Kittle is a god amongst mortals. And if he ever, like, he got a touchdown this game, but, you know, he's always had historically like pretty bad, like, TD luck. If he ever manages to click on like a TD one season, like it's not even going to be like close what he does versus what someone else does. Yeah, that'd be fucking. That'd be a lot of fun to have a season where Kill pops off like fifteen touchdowns. Yeah, like I said, if he clicks for a touchdown, like you just want one out of him. That's all. You <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, so that's a good one. Uh, what else do we need to talk about this week? Oh, uh, the New York Giants. I mean, I I, I tweeted about this earlier, but like starting, I think you guys should do this too. Like. When I was redoing my ranks, when I saw some guy that I did not want to roster, I just straight up deleted him out of the ranks. I was like, you're out. All right. Devonta Freeman, you're out. Like, Deion Lewis, you're out. There's no point ranking. Daniel Jones, you're gone. (laughs) Yeah. Daniel Jones, you're gone. There's no point ranking these fucking scrubs and like worrying about the bottom of the the bottom of the ranks. There's no one fucking. Listen, if you're using my ranks to tell you who to pick between pick 220 and 250, yeah, it's already that, over for you. It's already over for true. you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's over, over for before you. it started. <laughs> it's already over for you. Okay. You should. I like to spend my time in the top of the ranks, the top 100. That's where I'm going to focus going forward. And I'm going to stop. I'm just going to stop ranking all these like shitty players. And if someone pops off on the waiver, I'll add them on then. But New York Giants, man, that entire backfield, fucking entire. I mean, that entire offense. Freeman, was, Freeman admittedly didn't look terrible, and I'm not surprised we, we got some games like this from him because he's going to catch some passes there. But like. I think it's only a matter of time before he fucking dies on the field. Like, I really think he's just, <laughs> I think he's just going to get his knees taken out and he's going to pass away on that life stadium. <laughs> but like, he was that, so that blunt off- with that. It's just a matter of time before he fucking dies on the field. That, that I guess offense, what we've seen recently, it's not, it's not uncommon. Yeah. That offense looks, I mean, it looks, it looks really putrid. I mean, granted Freeman got a couple of catches. That how about that? Saved his day. How about that fucking throwdown between Tate and Ramsey? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I did. I did not know that. The whole that Ramsey, Ramsey fathered Tate's sisters, like children. Like that. I, I think it was, I, I think it might be the flip of that. I think Ramsey's Tate might've uh, sister. I think Tate, I think Tate got, was with Jalen Ramsey's sister had, kids with her and then he didn't like how they they ended up breaking up and he didn't like how the relationship ended apparently it was like a very public thing uh the breakup but i had no idea about this and obviously fucking uh no no no. ramsey left tate's sister ramsey left tate's sister yeah that's the only that's only that makes sense it makes no sense like i was gonna say yeah oh okay okay that does make a lot more sense because ramsey's (laughs) such a fuck boy like he would be really ignorant like that 
And then yeah, yeah. Ramsey comes out. And I don't know, how is Ramsey going to have so much hate for Tate when <laughs> Ramsey <laughs> really does that? Like, why is he coming out here trying to spear people? <laughs> like That's like, like so sad because usually, like, the underdog wins in those fights. And then you see Golden Tate get pile dragged into the ground, like, six feet deep. It's like, that, you just can't feel good about him. He's getting his ass blown out. He's on the Giants every single week. And now the guy who is upset or he was upset with just beat his ass, like, it can't be about, much to be happy about if you're Golden Tate. How about the Giants giving Golden Tate, who's like 31 years old, a $40 million contract? Like, <laughs> yeah. David Gettleman. Like, well, aspirations, Joe Judge, coach of the year. <laughs> Joe Judge, uh, he's actually on pace for the worst start from a head coach of all time, 0-4. <laughs> he's on pace for an 0-16 season. I would love that. I would <laughs> sure Hugh Jackson's is close there. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Bill O'Brien, uh, oh, he's gone, baby. I, I was so excited to see, what, uh, to see Twitter after Bill O'Brien got fired. <laughs> I'll think Twitter, Bill O'Brien Twitter is a good Twitter. It's one, it's one of the few good ones out there. It's um, so is he yeah. the OC now? Because I saw that he was going to be calling all the plays, and like two minutes later he said he got fired. So I don't know like what's going on there. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Yeah, no, he's uh, – he's, no, he's, I think he's gone. He gone. He gone. Yeah, he gone. He's going to be in – You know what? I, I saw a report that they were actually going to look into Adam Gase if he got fired. I don't know if it was a joke or not, but I wouldn't put it past him. Romeo Cornell's taking over. I have no idea what that means for the offense. Well, Romeo Cornell's like 72, so I'm assuming it's probably not a good thing for the Houston <laughs> Texans offense. They were all already running the lowest percentage of play action plays. Deshaun Watson leads the NFL in sacks right now. Like, I don't think this is going to be a quick cleanup. Like, getting Bill O'Brien out, sure, it's good for the, for the future, but they don't really have a future right now because they don't have their first round pick, they don't have their second round pick. And, uh, they, they could really use a guy like DeAndre Hopkins right now. Yeah, so. but David Johnson looked really good in the first quarter of the season. <laughs> we were wrong about him. So wrong, bro. I love that. That's going to be like – that's going to be my entire summer is just yelling about David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, and Todd Gurley. What do you guys uh, think about – I mean, you know, we were praising Sean McVay. We were praising the Rams offense. We are praising the Rams O-line. We are praising Darrell Henderson, who had some monster back-to-back -back weeks. And this week comes up against a trash opponent at home, and Darrell Henderson retires. Uh, what the fuck happened Here, here's there? What I, here's what I think. I think Sean McVay – I think they started playing against the Giants, and they're like, there's no way the Giants are going to beat us. You know, like you know, some teams, like, win the game, they take the game from you, or you yeah. could, like, lose the game. I yeah. feel like he was just like – as long as we don't lose the game, as long as we don't do, like, risky shit and try to throw the ball deep and turn the ball over, like, there's no way we're losing to the Giants. So he probably felt like Malcolm Brown was a safer back to put out there. But Jared Goff <laughs> attempted, like, one pass more than 20 yards down the field <laughs> the whole game. So I just – I'm not even fucking joking. This is really the, the way I feel like – It went for, like, a 50-yard touchdown to Cooper Cup. So yeah, but it was, like, a 15-yard slam. Like, it wasn't really, like, a deep pass or anything like that. So I've, I feel like he trusts Malcolm Brown just to not fuck up, right? Like, Malcolm Brown is not a good running back, but – He'll get four four yards and not fumble the ball. So as long as they could like control the clock, as long as they can ground and pound and and not turn the ball over, he knew that the Giants' offense was not going to beat them. Wasn't that like yeah. a twelve and a half point spread too? And like they barely scored twelve points. It was like yeah. ten nine for like three and a half quarters. Yeah. Well, what did the final score end up being? Nineteen seven. Nineteen nineteen uh, seventeen nine. Seventeen uh, seventeen nine. Yeah. So they didn't cover the spread. I think it was like twelve and a half points. But yeah, I mean like. That's 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 kind of the way I saw the game. It's obviously super disappointing for Darrell Henderson owners and Cam Akers are going to be back now. So, you, like they're like the Tampa Bay backfield of the also NFC. Just I feel like he's like one of the only coaches that doesn't lie. Like a coach would be like, "Oh, he's our workhorse," and then use a committee. He's like, "We're going to use a committee," and then they actually use a committee, and we're upset that he's using a committee. So, I guess he's true to his word if there's anything there. But once Cam Akers is back in the fold, he seemed to be the starter in week two or week three, whenever prior to his injury. So. I think it's just going to be a shit show back there. I wouldn't feel comfortable starting any one of these guys. I'm going to have yeah. to start Henderson and E-Town get down because of Eckler's death, untimely death. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be uh, – A lot of funerals to attend. So uh, last thing – I mean, maybe not last thing, but one thing I do want to cover, Jonathan Taylor, a.k.a. Trent Richardson, a.k.a. Cam Akers, is <laughs> running – looks – he's running like a he's got, Stevie Wonder. He's running look like he's got – fucking fogged up goggles out there man i mean he does not look good i will say this particular game is not all on him because for some reason uh frank reich decided to pull out the fucking spinorama between him and naheem hines and uh jordan wilkins out there so he's not really getting rhythm but even before this game i mean like i said i'm not a film expert but 
he's running with the vision of Trent Richardson, and uh, it's not something you want to see. I'm, I'm not billing on him yet because I still really believe in the profile, and I, I like the workload that he's getting uh, and the fact that the Colts' O-line isn't really living up to par either. But how, how concerned are you guys about Jonathan Taylor uh, moving forward? I'm just real sad because week one he had six targets, six catches. He looked like an animal. Ever since yeah. then, he has four targets over the past four we- over the last three weeks, so he's not being involved in that part of the field at all. And the other thing that concerns me, I know their offensive line is good, but Phil Rivers is fucking trash. He's not going to be there very long, so the quarterback situation is really up in the air. I don't know. I, I'm still a fan of Jonathan Taylor because I think it might just be rookie woes, and he's going to eventually become the inside runner that we think he is. But it just seems like he's not doing anything on the ground unless he's being used out in space. And the way that his running style is, it's like it doesn't really lend itself to being out in space all too much because they want to run him between the tackles. So it just doesn't – not that it doesn't look like a great fit right now. It's just – I think we got a little bit ahead of ourselves for claiming he's like a top five running back this season. For Dynasty, I'm still fine with like seeing him as a top five or six pick because I do think he does have the talent to present that upside. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he'll be fine going forward, to be honest. I think um, we did get really excited after week one, but like for good reason. He looked fucking awesome. He's catching a lot of passes. But they've also like dominated in terms of game script. They haven't needed to throw the ball at all. And I think in games where they do, like Rivers can't get it downfield. So he's going to continue to dump it off the running backs. But to be honest with you, like, Wilkins looked better than Taylor did on Sunday. People are like, oh, you know, they, why do they give him nine carries? And I know the yards per carry didn't work, but Wilkins was, like, actually making guys miss a little bit where Taylor is literally has, like, a magnet on his chest and he's just running into the fucking ass of the of the <laughs> lineman in front of him. It looks so bad, but I don't know. He just needs to find a couple of holes, and he's fast enough to, to break free. I'm, I'm sure we'll see some of those runs soon. So, uh, not looking good right now, but I, I, would, I would feel pretty good still if I had him in my redraft league. Yeah. I want to touch on a few more rookies. LaVisca Chanel is quietly having a very Debo Samuel-esque rookie year. Yeah. And I think – I don't know where I have him among my rookie receivers this year, but I think I'd have to have him like five or six. I mean, the versatility that he's shown and the fact that he's being used as heavily as he is in this offense, despite being hurt a lot of the offseason because he showed up to the combine in an MC Hammer shirt, tore both his hamstrings straight off the bone, his core got like surgery and shit like that. The way that he's looking on the field, he is – He's a man amongst boys, and I think him and DJ Chark going forward are going to be one of the most exciting wide receiver duos to watch in the NFL. Yeah, they're good. They're a good fucking combo. It came out and had like 90 yards, I think. On uh, they play on Thursday, or they played on? No, they played yesterday against the Bengals. Oh yeah, okay. Um, Yeah, Lavisca looked really good. I mean, dude, a lot of these rookie wide receivers are looking fantastic. CD Lamb. I mean, Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson, uh, Jerry Judy, like all of them are looking fucking. Really, 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 really good. It's a strong class coming in. There's a reason why there were so many of them. Even like Brandon Ayuk is looking good in his uh, weird fucking Debo Samuel-esque role. We'll have to see how, like, how that works out going forward because Debo's finally back. And, uh, I believe he out-targeted or outproduced him through the air in this game. But, um, yeah, definitely not disappointing given the talent and the draft capital of these receivers. Yep. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, normally you say fade rookie wide receivers, but the fact that – all of them, I mean, at least all the ones that matter are already producing like this early on in the season gives me a lot of hope uh, moving forward. I mean, when you perform early and you produce early, like chances are that that bodes well for you going forward. So yeah, I love, I love all of them like LaVisca T Higgins. I mean, damn shame that Jalen Rager got injured because he was looking pretty good as well. Although maybe, maybe not damn shame. That whole team looks like fucking ass, but you know, I, 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 I think Rager and, and Ruggs both would have, done really well like rugs looked real hot in the first half of the first game then he injured his knee and he hasn't been 100 percent since and yeah Rager looked really good the first game catching that deep pass and if this offense could have held up for more than like eight seconds at a time he would have been fine too so this could have been legitimately like eight rookie wide receivers that have, have really impressed yeah and i think one guy that we talked about briefly justin jefferson going forward for redraft leagues I don't think it's too brash to say he's like almost a wide receiver too, week in and week out. You look at Minnesota's schedule, Mike, I know you touched on it in the preseason before anything even got hashed out. And you were saying how they're they facing really high, highly efficient offenses. Minnesota's defense sucks. Minnesota's defense does suck. And you look at the defenses that Justin Jefferson is going to be facing over these next two weeks alone, Seattle and Atlanta, they're going to be throwing the ball. I know Kirk Cousins hasn't thrown for 30, uh, 30 attempts yet this season. He's enough to throw 35, 40 times to try to keep up with these other offenses, especially with their defense sucking. Those would yep. be great outputs for him. And then Green Bay, Detroit, Chicago's a little tough. And then Dallas, Carolina, Jacksonville, Tampa Bay all in a row. He seems to be – he's already broken out, but just like a legitimate breakout candidate. If he happens to be on your waiver wire at all, spend all you can to get him because he is – he's legit. He's doing what A.J. Brown did in his rookie year on a very similarly low-volume passing offense. But what he does after the catch and the fact that he's being used deep down the field as well, 
means that he doesn't necessarily need 150 targets to be able to produce top 24 numbers. I already talked about Justin Jefferson on the Mark Watch Monday, so I don't have too much more to add. Um, are there any, any other games that we want to cover? Uh, Mike Kosicki sucks. Figure that out again. Yeah. 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 We Mike don't say sucks here. We say stinks. <laughs> Mike Kosicki continues to do Mike Kosicki things in an absolute smash spot. I think he had, what, one catch for 15 yards. Coat. Uh, yeah, goaded, <laughs> goaded. Are there well. any? Are there any tight ends that have surprised us this year? Like, what's Robert the tight end Tynion? landscape even look like? John U. Smith, I guess. John U. Smith has been incredible. Um, I feel like COVID the Titans haven't played football in like four weeks. <laughs> like, it feels like they that. had the one COVID postponed, and like I don't know what's going on with them anymore. Dalton Schultz has looked great in Blake Jarwin's absence. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Mo Ali Cox is like just catching touchdowns on like one t- one target a game. He somehow comes away <laughs> with two touchdowns. <laughs> <Slow-mo>. <laughs> No fucking sense. Um, I, Chris I feel Herndon like TJ Hawkinson has low key been. What's up? I think Chris Herndon's probably the worst tight end in the league. Like that's Dude, safe. What the fuck has happened to Chris Herndon? <laughs> why? Why does he fucking stink? I don't know. Ryan Griffin is better than him at this point. Maybe the Jets knew something we didn't. They've been playing the long. They gave Griffin the extension. They they've been playing the long game with us. How about Logan respect- Thomas too? He's like. Twitter's favorite tight end because he runs a million routes, but he's trying to catch passes from Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> I think in one of the waiver write ups, I said he's a bigger decoy for fantasy players than he is on the actual field because he just doesn't do anything. More <laughs> after week. That's Dude, Terry McLaurin, though, man, this kid yeah. is a baller. Go. I benched him because uh, I was dumb and I thought that his injury would impact him and Marlon Humphrey would cover him. Wrong. Nobody's covering Terry McLaurin. He's going to be a beast. Too you big. never bench him. You never bench him anymore after this, and I will never bench him anymore after this. But, uh, yeah, he's he is – you know, th- dude, when we said fade wide receivers early on in the offseason, like, this is why. You, you, what did you, you get? You get Red Ridley. You had Metcalf. Dude, it you was have literally yeah, we, it was, you it was have Shark. Robinson, Shark, McLaurin. Yeah. yeah, dude, Lockett, Metcalf. Like, all those yeah. round four, five, six wide receivers are, yeah. are, are just – yeah. Smashing right now. I mean, we're catching L's everywhere else, but I mean, the one <laughs> yeah. the one W zone is the mid round wide receivers. I mean, that that zone is smashing quite hard. In our in our what to do dynasty league, I think I have like a bunch of them. I have DK and I have uh, McLaurin and I have AJ Brown and I have Justin Jefferson and I have T Higgins. Right. So you guys, you guys are basically fucked for the next. Good five for you. Years once my team I think I, I think I was like low key gonna offer you uh, George Kittle for like two of those guys. <laughs> Oh, like shit. <laughs> last week. I take that back, though. Like, I have your wide receiver stable, but like seven years older a piece. Like Keenan Allen, uh, Adam Thielen, <laughs> Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. <laughs> like, it looks nice, but in two years, it's going to look real shitty for me. Yeah, they're like the college graduates showing up to the high school party. <laughs> <laughs> it's ugly. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it, you motherfuckers. That that's is all we got, we got for this week's film. Breakdown. Make sure that you review this on podcast. If you are listening via your ear holes, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, both this channel you're watching on or and if you are watching on the Bunk Bed Breakdowns channel. All of that, just fucking do it. All the links will be down in the description. Gentlemen. Please, 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 please.